Now, an emergency weather alert from Andy's Randomness. All right, it is Sunday, August 29th, 2021. I am Andy Pollock, the executive producer, director, creator of Andy's Randomness. This is your latest update on Hurricane Ida and the conditions in Louisiana are quickly deteriorating. They're expected to for the remainder of the afternoon going into the evening. I've been watching a few storm chasers since the past hour and the conditions are just getting worse. Getting a lot worse and one storm chaser I was watching, um, they were driving and it was just pouring rain in New Orleans right now. So, wherever you are right now, I guess just try to ride it out if you can. But, let's get you the latest details now on the Category 4 storm and we have proof it is a cat 4 we'll just pull it up here in just a second and we're just gonna wait for the thing to pull up just had it and there it is okay category 4 hurricane Ida 150 mile per hour wind gusts 150 mile per hour wind speed the gust is 184 so it's almost 200 mile per hour wind gust Pressure is quickly going down. There's a 10% chance, I'm going to give a fair number, 10, that this could be a Cat 5. But I don't want to speculate anything, but that's the way it's looking. It's just quickly, quickly growing because of the warm Gulf of Mexico water. Location currently right now is 60 miles west-southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi River. So next up, what I'm going to do, I want to show you something very interesting on the radar scope. And this is how I think I'm going to be monitoring it for the remainder of the day. Unless I get a major update from here on my radar. But I'm not trying to use my radar because two programs really will just kill my CPU today. So let's just go to here. Let me get rid of this. And when I want to show you, this is radar scope. And what's so important about this program, you may be wondering. Well, this program has a lot of important uses. Okay, a lot of meteorologists use it, especially a lot of the AMS ones. And they use this specific program because they use it a lot to track tornadoes. And there's a possibility today that New Orleans, the whole metropolitan New Orleans area, that is, could get tornadoes. And with radar scope, you could see the eye of the storm, which is right there. Versus my radar, you're not going to get that much specific. So... Look how far the rain's gone up. It's in Mobile, Alabama. So they're getting tropical storm-like conditions today. So what I want to do next, and what I want to show you how alarming this is, especially because the eye is just getting closer to landfall, is go over to... My window capture right here. I'm going to keep the radar scope in the background on my computer today. Just because radar scope is going to help me a lot today. So there's the eye. Alright, so let me give you an illustration of the eye. So you get an idea of uh, what I'm trying to talk to you all about. Okay, here we go. Eye is right here. See, this is the eye. See that little dot? Yep, that's the iron right now on the radar. And what I want to do is I want you to look at it yourself. 
Take a hard look. Take a real hard look at this. Because this is what Louisiana is going through right now. And I was supposed to load up the uh, Noah at the end. So I'll just uh, get the East Coast view as we go along. I'll load that up in the background for the end of the video. This is last night. I want to show you last night for a reason. As you can see from last night, this is when it was gaining in strength in the golf. I'm going to let you all know right now, this was almost 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay? And taking a look at how strong this storm has gotten, it's just incredible. I mean, we've had a Cat 5 hit Panama City a couple years ago. And, you know, it's amazing how these storms just intensify. So here's Tropical Tidbits. I don't want to go to the infrared today because I don't think the infrared's going to do us any good. I think this is going to have to be the um, floater model I'm going to have to use on Tidbits today. Just because I think it's more specific, this one. And it, and it gives you an idea of the eye. And you can see the eye right here. On Tropical Tidbits. So, what I want to do right now is show you some storm reports that we are just getting right now. And I've been keeping an eye on Agenda Free TV. And I'm trying to get this video out as soon as I can. So I can continue monitoring Agenda Free TV, I can continue monitoring local affiliates in New Orleans, and I can continue to monitor any storm chasers throughout the uh, remainder of the afternoon. Okay, so this is what I want to show you first, and this is the most alarming, urgent thing I need to show you. So, this is on my Twitter, and I'll try to tweet some stuff out. I'm going to follow along with Steve Luckner, and if I see any important stuff today follow me on twitter at real andy random that's at real andy random um i also been encouraging people hey on my instagram i have up to the minute information on what i think is important like right now with you know what nbc news was saying earlier this morning when they officially said well it's cat four so there you go this tweet right here. Grand Isle lost connection of our weather station from the outer Iowa. Last measurement was 136 miles per hour. And currently there is a possibility that direct landfall from Ida could happen around 1 p.m. Eastern. Or within the next half hour. It's just too soon to even predict what the situation could be. So. New Orleans is still expecting the worst. And it says here that the outer eye wall could still impact New Orleans. There's still a possibility that one of the eye walls could hit here. But then you wonder what Baton Rouge can go through. These are two close cities right here. Thankfully, Lafayette, and thankfully this time around, Lake Charles is savaged. So, think about how bad it's been. So, I'm not going to play the audio of this video, because I have an other important video I want you to take a look at. But this is Grand Isle, Louisiana. And as you can see here, um, we do have power outages. And I am going to report to you um, as we go along here. But we have a 100 mile per hour wind gust reported in Grand Isle, Louisiana. So what I want to do right now is go to this and play this video. So let's play this video. And uh, we're going to see an update from St. Bernard Parish. All right, guys, we're now at the Florissant Rock Dam. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have significant water here already. 
We anticipate these levees being overtopped and going on to uh, 46. It just goes to show you how much this wind is blowing right now. It's early on in this event. It's dangerous for us to be out here. We got to get back to the office. So it's, it's, it's so important for people to stay inside, stay hunkered down. Right now, we're already at 45 miles an hour sustained winds. Our first responders cannot get to you. So please stay where you're at stay and stay off of the roads here in St. Bernard Parish. You cannot go to Delic Row, you cannot go to Wyclosky. The water's coming up way too fast. Our thoughts and prayers are with everyone, and God bless. So again, that was St. Bernard Parish, and you know, look how, even in this video, you could tell the water is just going up. It's just a very scary situation. I know a lot of people went through Katrina, and I get that. Especially how I remember during Sandy, um, Long Beach, New York, they got um, they got close to this amount of water coming up. But I don't think it's this bad than what um, Long Beach went through nine years ago. No, I mean, this is much worse than Long Beach, New York. All right, so let's go to Power Outage US, and I want to show you the orange color for a second. You see the orange color? 50K to 100,000K outages right there. So let's click on the state of Louisiana. Before I get to that, they actually have the number right here. So you can see the state of Louisiana has 65,535 customers out. So... Thankfully, I know the map of Louisiana pretty well. And Orleans County. That's what I want to focus on first. This is Orleans County. We just have the numbers right here. Orleans County has 17,408 out. Jefferson has 31,449. Pocomus County has 7,601. So we're already seeing the outages start to pile up. And it's only going to get worse as we go along here. Now, which power company has the worst out outages? Energy currently right now has 70,899 customers out. So let me show you the company right here. That's Energy. That's them right here. I moved the um, OBS a little bit to the left so you can see it. That's much better. <laughs> Then you got Cleco Power 5641. So there you go. It's just going to get worse as we go along here. And here it is on the NHG website. Close to landfall. So now let's get to the key messages. So let me move this down a little bit so I can read the whole thing. There we go. Now you can see it. Extremely life-threatening storm surge inundation of 9 feet or greater above ground level is intimate somewhere within the area of Burns Point, Louisiana to Ocean Springs, Mississippi. Overtopping of local levees outside of the Hurricane Storm Damage Risk Reduction Center is possible where local inundation values may be higher. Catastrophic wind damage will occur where the core of Ida moves onshore along the southeast coast of Louisiana in the next few hours. Hurricane force winds and damaging wind gusts are expected today within the hurricane warning in southeastern Louisiana, including metropolitan New Orleans. Damaging winds, especially in gusts, will spread inland near the track of the center of Ida in the southwestern Mississippi later this evening and going into the early hours of Monday morning. So, Mississippi's still going to see something out of this. And I kind of saw it on the radar last night. I saw a couple bands of rain that were going to move into the northwestern part of Mississippi. And, of course, no surprise, these winds will likely lead to widespread tree damage and power outages. Ida will continue to produce heavy rainfall today through Monday across the central Gulf Coast from southeastern Louisiana 
coastal Mississippi and far southwestern Alabama. So, like we saw on the radar, Mobile is seeing some rain today. And saying that there's life-threatening flash and urban flooding and significant river flooding impacts. As Ida moves inland... Significant flooding impacts are possible across portions of Lower Mississippi, Tennessee Valley, Upper Ohio Valley, Central Adulations, and the Mid Atlantic through Wednesday. There you go. So now, what I want to do is just take you to the cone. That's the first thing I want to show you. And here's the cone. All the way from Louisiana all the way here on this Louisiana coastline. So it is a major hurricane, as expected. And then when it makes landfall, it's still expected to weaken down to a category two. Now, it will weaken to a tropical storm by early Monday morning in Mississippi. But, we're seeing some tropical moisture potentially affect where I am in New York on Thursday morning. So there's still some expected tropical moisture coming for New York on Thursday. So, I know we've been getting a lot of rain in New York the past couple of days. So... It's still cloudy here today, come to think of it here. So what I want to do is take a look at the Storm Prediction Center. Now why are we looking at the Storm Prediction Center, you may be wondering. Well, let's take a look at this. And as you can see here, it's slight risk. But what doesn't make any sense, why isn't it at the highest risk today for severe weather. That doesn't make any sense. I don't understand Norman, Oklahoma's logic today. It's that rare category, but... Okay, let's go to the surge first. So we're looking at 12 to 16 feet from Port Funch Run all the way to the mouth of the Mississippi. Lake Pontchartrans, that's around New Orleans. We're looking at 5 to 8 feet today. Then you got the Mississippi-Alabama border, 4 to 7 feet. Then you got maybe 5 to 8 feet on the Bay of St. Louis and Mississippi. So, that's going to have to be modern. Like I figured, the flash flood potential is 50% high. It's a very big area, and it goes all the way to Baton Rouge. Very big area. But then you got to worry about Mississippi when this weakens to a tropical storm. How much rain is Mississippi going to get going into tomorrow? This is where we may get an answer. Six inches are expected in Jackson. Right over there. Then you got New Orleans, which is the cause of concern today. New Orleans could get 15 inches of rain. And that's the same amount they almost got during Katrina. Then we're going to look at the arrival time of the winds. And we already know that they are in New Orleans as we speak. So later tonight, we are expecting the winds to hit Mississippi and even parts of Alabama. Some parts, that is. And then let's take a look at the wind speed. And the wind speed is expected to be 90 miles per hour. As expected, going into northwestern Mississippi, right over there. 
So let's take a look at the GFS model. We'll go over here. So they think it's going to weaken to a Cat 3. Gains a little bit over here. So the MB is going to drop to a Cat 1. There it goes in the Mississippi. And there it goes. So very fast moving once we hit Monday. Today it's just where it's going to slow down. And then it speeds up day by day. And then I'm just going to take a look at my region for uh, New York. I just want to see if it will get me to Thursday. I'm just looking for potential of heavy rain on Thursday. It looks like, yep, there's the potential of heavy rain on Thursday as a tropical depression. So this is still a very strong storm. And it's going to dump a lot of rain in New York on Thursday. So... That's kind of alarming to think that a lot of people may even think about leaving for Labor Day weekend on Thursday. And there's a potential of rain in my area, I would say, four days from now. And this is from the National Hurricane Center. I mean, it won't be as bad as what New Orleans is going through, but... Um, early to speculate, but I may be getting a nor'easter here in New York on Thursday. So, I've been through them. Can't be that bad as what New Orleans is going through. So, here is our NAM model. And our NAM model is saying right here that still is weakening to a Cat 3. Goes here. So, now it thinks it's going to go in the northeastern Mississippi. Hmm. I mean, again, a lot of inconsistencies on the models, but. So now what we can do is use windy.com to our real full potential today. And the reason why I say we can use it to the full potential is because now we get a clearer idea of hour by hour. And again, look how slow... This is moving into New Orleans. See that eye wall? The outer eye wall may hit the northwestern part of New Orleans. And that's not good. Because if you're seeing the eye wall hit New Orleans on the northwestern side of the city, that's very alarming. And then there's an eastern part of the eye wall, 1 o'clock in the morning. That could still be in New Orleans. And then you can see here. That is Mississippi. And as you can see in Mississippi. There it goes. And it's in agreement. I mean the National Hurricane Center must be using Windy.com to make this determination. And remember this is still the outer eye wall of Ida. Still in Mississippi. So a lot of Mississippi could see a lot of rain from this. So if you're in Mississippi, I would say take this very seriously right now. I mean, don't treat it as like a Cat 1, but be prepared for a lot of flooding rain. Look, even Tennessee might get something out of this, because this is still the outer eye wall of it. I mean, this is just one big storm. Okay, so now we're officially going to wrap up this video update, and a lot's going to have to be monitored within the next couple of hours, so with that, thank you all very much for watching, and if you're in Louisiana, please stay safe today. Everyone is keeping a thought on your safety, and... I'll mention very quickly that later at around 2 p.m. local time, 3 p.m. Eastern, um, the governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, is expected to give an update 
So it would be very important to listen to your governor today because he's going to be giving you very important information. And I know he's been trying to give you information since Thursday. So it would be word of advice to listen to Governor Edwards today as he gives you all an update. If you're in Baton Rouge and New Orleans, I would suggest to pay attention closely to his update. And um, maybe even we'll hear from the governor of Mississippi today. Because knowing that there is a chance of flash flooding expected in northwestern Mississippi going into the early hours of tomorrow morning, it would be wise if the governor of Mississippi even speaks today. So let's hope he does as well. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. Once again, stay safe if you're in Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Please think of the best way to stay safe. Because again, this is a very powerful storm. And you can see the eye wall from this point of view from the satellite. So until the next one, please take care.